Hello, hello guys. How are you doing today? Welcome to your show, Pharma of TV once again. Thank you for always being part of um, the show and um, always joining us um, on the show. And uh, we thank you so much for subscribing and um, um, sharing and also, you know, loving our page. Uh, we are happy that at least you're encouraging us because of... Um, what we're doing and you like what we're doing thank you so much once again my name still remains ayo your pharma up tv host um as always um we, we haven't been able to bring um a guest um on the show um in a while not that we don't have a guest to bring but um we all we wanted to concentrate more on other part of um the show which is um like um our series which was um um we we uploaded um last which was um the f farming in small space and um you know that's doing pretty well as well um we are happy we're able to encourage um you guys to think out of the box and um you know farm as little as you can um no matter how small the space is um thank you so much uh, for being part of um the show always we are very happy that um, you can join us um on today's show we do have a guest for you um uh, we have a very wonderful topic which i know everybody will be um happy to um to to be part of um and that's um we are bringing um a guest who is um and an authority in the aspect of um, goat farming, especially the boa goat. And um, you know how it is, uh, it's one of the most expensive um, um, goat farming business and um, lucrative business as well. So uh, we do have a guest on, on that is going to be joining us on the show anytime from now in the name of uh, Mr. Tijani Omokende. Um, he's the head of um, operations um, Pritzel um, Farm. I believe I pronounced that well. Um, if not, he's going to join us and he's going to let us know exactly how to pronounce that. Um, so um, he's uh, the head of operation. He's an expert in goat farming and um, especially the boa goat. And um, you all know that um, there, are, there are a lot of advantages to this breed. And um, he's going to be telling us everything that we need to know everything that we need to know about um farming boil goat and um he's going to be sharing his knowledge with us his experiences is um 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 what he's been able to achieve in this um um sector of um agriculture and he's going to be sharing that with us we're still hoping to get him um locked on on the show right now but um since we're still not able to do that, um, let's um, talk about uh, some of our other shows, like um, our series, um, Farming in Sports, Small Spaces. Uh, we do have some other um, series coming up where we're going to be showing different um, um, ways to plant in small spaces. Um, we have some, um, we're going to be diving into uh, small hydroponic um, um, um planting as well um that's um the soilless plants which we use um, a toad or a container and um it's just going to be you know powered by um water and um, a pump and um, we're going to be getting into that we're going to be you know viewing the construction from beginning till you know the plants um grow as well so we're going to take us on every step um, of the journey and um, you're going to be part of this as well so that um, in case you want to do the same thing you'll be able to um to to do that as well so um while we're still waiting for our guest uh, mr tijani um i do want to say once again if you do like what we're doing do please um subscribe um share and click on the notification button so that we are able to let you know when other episodes or any series is going to be um on on our channel and um we are so thankful that you are part of us and um if you do have anything that you would like us to talk about or to review any products and everything do um go on our on our 
page or social media contact us and let us know about it we'll be able to do um an honest review on it and show you how you know that product is and um what um you can achieve by that and um thank you so much once again while we're still waiting for mr t Johnny, i'm still i'm just going to you know um, go through some of um the questions we have we we do want to talk about um you know what would be the best um time to breed a boar goat how young can one breed a boar goat uh we want to talk about things like um how do they produce um what um, is going to be the best time to um to market this product uh we all know that boar goats um, um or, or any goat in, entirely would um is is not um um a wastage when you when you do that you do always um have a market for it and uh, so we're going is going to be sharing us um um ideas of where this markets are and everything so hopefully we'll be able to you'll be able to join us we're still waiting on him i think he's having issues with his connection um so we are going to be talking about um what um we're doing to um bring our own local breeds um up like a boar goat because we know the boar goat is originally from south africa and um some other parts of the world you know contributed to having this breed so how do we you know um, get our own local breed um into this kind of um um standard as well what are we doing and uh, you know to make this possible and um you know um can the bargo be cross um, bred can you breed it with um our local breeds or with any other type of um, breed of goats you know so these are all the questions we are hoping to um talk to mr tijani about um so we are hoping he's going to join us soon um but um you know you know how the network is back home in nigeria so we'll, we'll be hoping you know it comes online very soon or we would have to just um you know run through some of the informations we have and um, then we would go on as well uh thank you once again uh, for joining us if you do like what we're doing uh, do subscribe do um, click on the notification button and also um share with your families and friends so that they will be able to join the family the the farmer hub family so that um, we will grow together we will learn together and we'll achieve success together um do you remember planting in small spaces is another thing that we are trying to um you, you know to push to um everybody that no matter how small your um place is you can always plant something um even if it's in your living room it's um in your room there are all kinds of um products you can use to plant there are all kinds of um all types of planting uh materials that you can use you don't have to do um plants with soil they are soilless plants they are greenhouses where very small greenhouses boxes should um i should say that you can use um we are on the show we are going to be coming up um, with all these um ideas and we are going to be showing us the, the different um ways that we can plant in small space because um one of the importance of this is to help us feed our family because um if you can plant um as little as you can in you know, so you'll be able to reduce what um, the amount you spent in you spend in groceries and things like that outside and um all the most important things are you're going to be eating fresh you're going to be eating you know what you actually know where it's coming from you know it's coming from your own little um small plantation unlike um when you go to the stores that you are not able to determine where these things come from or how they are planted um you know and things like that so that's why we're trying to encourage this you know plants as lead to uh, no matter where it is even on your desk you know you could put a small plant there you know you could um plant anything there are all types of you know dwarf plants that they don't have to be very big you know that um you could um achieve um so if you want to be part of this um do join us on our series um, planting in small space and um we'll be very glad to be on the journey with you 
we are going to be bringing up some guests as well um who is going to be talking about um you know planting in small space and how we can achieve this and um we'll, you know and um we, we we will share all this with you and we'll be on this journey together so you know we are farmers and we are we are encouraging farmers helping farmers you know uh that's um what the show is all about um another thing i wanted to touch base on is um 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 i do have um a guest that i interview sometimes back about um, bee production who has been able to achieve a lot um uh, in the name of mr odonton daniel um i can't remember his um other names but um is he has an interview that we posted on our social media and uh, do please um, go on there go and um, check um his page out so that um you'll be able to see what he's doing as well he's really achieving a lot um uh, so that's um mr odunton daniel ade shino and like i said he's um he has an interview that he did with um um in the us with um um a media outfit in the u.s about beekeeping about how to achieve um success in beekeeping um you know um honey making and things like that um so do go and check out um our social media page or um out you see um that article there please do go and read it's a video article actually you can um view his interview do join him on there. Mr. Duto is doing great things. Um, he's based in um, in Salt Lake City, um, and um, that's in the U.S. Uh, so um, do go on there, join him, and um, we'll be very happy to that um, you came um, so that we can share with each other you understand informations that we we know. Also, I do like to say thank you to. Um, our go-to person in Nigeria, that's um, in the name of Tunde, um, for always, you know, sourcing for guests and um, information and things like that for us. We are very glad to to have him. Um, so it, uh, it is looking like we won't be able to get uh, Mr. Um, Tijani on the show uh, right now because, um, I don't know, the network must be really, really bad is not coming on so um i'm so sorry that um this is happening this is the first time we're able to we're trying to get a guest that we have not been able to get them and um we'll you know it's a wonderful topic that we want to share with each other but like i said um there's a lot of information that we wish we could have um gotten from him you know and um we will try to get him on once again you know we will I'll try to get him once again uh, on the show. If not, um, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we would um, hopefully be able to bring him back um, um, on our next show. And um, if you do like what we're doing, do share and subscribe um, on the channel. And um, also, you can also um, go view some of our other other um our other series um we do have some of our guests um actually being part of the show um but like i said we are not able to get uh mr tijani to talk to us about um boa goat um i do want to say thank you to uh bolati tosalami for joining us um also to a go to gloria from e um from italy thank you so much i'm um, sorry that um you know we are not able to bring uh, Mr. Tijani on the on the show today. We will try to see if we can get him back on on the show again. But um, oh, I think he actually joined us now. Uh, it's um, better late than never, like they say. Uh, so let's just connect him immediately, and so that we can get on the show. Hello, good day. Yeah, good day. Good evening. Good I'm evening. Good. How are you doing? Um, how is the family? Fine, we thank God. We are good. Okay, so like I said, it's better late than never. Thank you so much for still coming on, for being part of the show. Um, I was actually about signing out, you know, that we are not able to get you, but then you came wow. online. So it means that um, it's meant to be. Uh, so 
Well, let's just go straight to the point. We would like you to please um, uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, okay, my name is uh, Tijani Omokende, and I'm a ruminant farmer, the um, operation manager at Predzul Animal Farm. And uh, we are into goat and cattle breeding, cow breeding. Mm. So we we do exotic, you know, we, we cross exotic with uh, indigenous goat. Mm. So we actually specialize on boa and kalihari as far goat is concerned. Mm. And at the same time, we specialize on Brahma and Bokolo, the breeding of Brahma with Bokolo as cow is concerned. Wow. As a, Oh, that that's wonderful. We um um is actually part of the question I was just um telling our viewers that um we are hoping to talk to you about that um how do we crossbreed our local breeds with um you know the foreign breeds? Uh, so we will get to that definitely. But um thank you so much for the brief introduction. That's um well done. Um so well, our topic today basically is going to be talking about the boar goat and um everything we we can you can you'll be able to give us about it so um uh, the boar goat just can you give us a little bit of origin of what type of goat where it's from and things like that okay um boar goat originated from south africa they are known to be south african goats even though we i think we have them all over virtually holy europe and you know some other countries like that and <clears throat> What's so special about them is the um, the the hard up because mm. what what a pure boa goat will give you in six months, uh, as far as Nigeria is concerned, our indigenous may not give it to you in a year, mm. and it's likely the the the, the consumption rate as it likely is, it can be the same thing, but the conversion rate is different. Mm. So to us, if you have a pure line, a pure line boar goat can, in three months, can give you nothing less than 16, 17 kg. Wow. Which to us is stable size. Because if mm. you are doing meat for production, at that age, you can sell, you can slaughter. Any goat that is between 16, 17, 18 can be slaughtered. So that is, a boar goat can reach that size in, in four months, mm. in which our indigenous, any of our indigenous, you can talk of um, West African dwarves, Sahel, Red Sokoto, me, cannot give you that size. So that is just the conversion rate. That is what makes them different. And mm. they are known to be white and brown, you know, like the, the head and the other body is white and the head will be brown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that uh, so it's basically more about the conversion rate. That's exactly. um, why you know, um, in the aspect of say, for instance, because I I know we um, growing up, the the thing I knew about goats was uh, wow, it's it's one of the sweetest meat you can you can think of. So um, if you're talking about the conversion rate, that's the basic thing. Is there, okay. is there any difference in it in taste-wise? There's no difference, to be honest with you. We've been able to <clears throat> we've, slot, we've been able to slaughter. We've been able to have a taste of boar goats. And I can tell you there's no any difference as far as taste is concerned. There's no any difference. Well, okay, so I just wanted to, you know, pull, you know, ask that out there. So um, what's the earliest time um, a boar goat can be bred. Say, for instance, um, I I bought um a doe, and um, now um, I want to I want to start like I'm a breeding farm myself. What's the earliest I can breed my boar goat? Now, for a doe, I think practically eight months, mm -hmm. seven months, eight months. That is the earliest time you can try, and even for the <clears throat> for the buck. They can they can cross when they are you no know, between that five months six months but professional is not advisable because we have a mindset that they are not yet ready we need to have permit or to allow them to reach their potentials mm. before we start using them so, so for both sides know. either the buck and the doe they shouldn't be less than six seven eight months. Mm. Six seven eight months. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, that's not really bad. Um, so in in that line, what would okay. you say is um, the the best um, practices that you can use in breeding them? How how would uh, okay? Um, I want to start one. What practices do I have to follow? Because um, the whole reason for our show is uh, talk to someone like you who is already experienced. I know you must have gone through um, some good and bad. Hopefully, more good yeah. than bad. You understand? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we we try to share with our um, upcoming farmers, young farmers, even older farmers that want to you know get into breeding. What would you say? Okay. I'm giving you, this is the best practices, buy, feed, do this, and things like that. How would you share, you know, talk to an upcoming farmer who wants to get into breeding boar goat? Thank you. Um, I think, firstly, either boar or any indigenous, but let's, I mean, we are talking on boar goat. The, the land is very, very crucial. Mm. The land, the space that you need. The second thing that is very crucial is is the housing, the pen. Because goats generally didn't like anything cold, mm. as far as we are concerned here. So the way you put up the structures, their pen, their housing, what we practice, we do elevated platform. Oh, okay. That is, you know, we, we raise the platform so that they won't have a contact probably with their droppings, their urines, or even the bare floor. So mm -hmm. I will tell people, I say, the best thing to do is to have an elevated platform for your for your goats, for the housing. For the housing, yeah. Yes, you understand. Now, goats, they are ruminants. Are you getting it? And uh, yeah. regardless of how you want to combine the concentrates with legumes, the grasses that they need, Primarily, what they, they, they need to take in enough grasses. So, and that has to go with the land because if you, no matter the numbers of the animals you have, if you don't have enough grasses and legumes for them, they are not going to do well, no matter what. Okay. So they are, yes, they're not going to do well. So, and we have some other, we have some, you no, know, actually, we, we have some grasses that we have in our farm, you no know, molatutu, some bracaria, some other legumes like that, that is actually good for good. But no matter how you are starting small, you need a land, you need a very good space for them. Their pen has to be an elevated platform mm. and they have to have access to grasses. Okay. At least 80% of what they take daily. Okay. So um, do you now encourage, okay, since we're talking about land size, um, it, it, that means it will be important to have where you can actually grow your own grass or do you have to buy the f um, the grass from um, I remember you know growing up we when we get um, goats or ram we always buy the feed as well from those okay. sellers right but um, if you're going to be a breeder you can't do that because yes. they, they probably won't have enough to sell to yeah. you you understand yes. so how do you go about the feeding the grass do you, you know, what would you advise someone, you know, that wants yeah. to start up? Okay, now, what we what we are doing presently is so easy. You know, in Nigeria, we have um, panicon all over. And with panicon is, I think, around 8% protein for them. So it's easy. What we do is we help root. We transplant panicon. Oh, okay. you understand? So you can clear as much as you can clear the land, probably one acre, two acres, then transplant panicon. Hmm. You understand? So by the time you transplant panicon for them, um, you do um, bracaria. We have this seed here. We have napri uh, at uh, Zaria. Hmm. You can get some seed there. You can even the maize. You understand? You can, you can get maize. You can plant for them. So by the time you combine all these things together, so if at all you are spending anything on feeding, it has to be concentrate. That's we concentrate. have grasses all over. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 That's, that's good. Um, what about um, this um, idea of um, what do you what do you call them? Um, um, China, that, that, um, I'm talking about the grass. Sorry. Hydroponic. 
hydroponic yeah what about that uh, is, is does that work as well uh, yes so actually we practice it but due to the numbers of the animals we have mm. you know at the beginning we're having over 100 goats mm. on the farm and you, you know how much it will cost you to go on hydroponic for them mm. You understand? Yeah, and we have around 93 cow, 93. So you know how much it's going to cost you. So if the number you have is, I mean, falling between 10 and 20, yes, mm. it may be easy. Mm. But when you have a large number, you just have to do something else. So mm. we've tried it, but based on the number we have, it doesn't work with us. It doesn't work. So you, you it's really something that you have to really think of, uh, okay, what you have versus what you have to give them and things exactly. like that. Yeah, exactly. So it's, exactly. It's very important. Mm. Um, so um, my next question basically will be, um, how do I identify um, a, a good breed? How do I, what are the features that I need to look at to know, okay, this is a real boar um, goat. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, how do one see it? Well, what are the things I need to look for? Okay, now, um, one, it has to be their ear, and two, the Roman nose. Now, th mm -hmm. there's a way. There's a way they have this. Um, actually, I just don't know how to. Put it. But there's a way. They, they, there's a way they are, they have a curved nose from the from the horn down mm. to their nose, somehow curve. You understand? Yes. So, and also the ear, the, um, how, will I, how will I put this? A, a, actually, a cross, a, a boar goat cross with any indigenous goat, will not, the, the ear is not going to be as large as, as pure. large, yeah. But mm -hmm. it, unless you see the pure, to those who have seen the pure, they're the only one that can differentiate the difference. Mm -hmm. So, if a boar has been crossed, or if a boar is not a pure, if it is not 100%, mm -hmm. the, the air is not going to be as large as the pure line. And the yeah. Roman nose is one of the major signs as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, so, um, the well, the, uh, uh, my next question is basically about elk and um you know how do you keep this um you know because they are roman, ruminants right how yeah. do you keep them healthy how do you make sure that diseases don't affect them how do you know you minimize it as much as possible or possibly you know don't don't even have it in there as well. So, what at um, biosecurity basically? How do you you know go about things like that? Okay. Um, firstly, when we have a new goat on the farm, it has to be quarantined for you know, a specific time. Mm. And during this time, we attend to that particular animal medically. Mm. Now, the first thing is to deworm generally, and generally on the farm, on our own farm. We do our animals every three, three months, except the rainy season, because they are prone to have more worms during the rainy season than the dry season. Dry season. So okay. in three months during the dry season, we do one that is if you do one on January, you're going to do one again on March ending, the next three months, the next three months. But in the rainy season, we do one every month. Mm. We do one every month. Now, there's, there's, you, you have to have a, um, a medical record and the calendar. So in which either the animal is sick or not, there should be a particular time in which you have a general treatment for the animal. Mm -hmm. Now, that will be four-month interval depending on the um, their status and how they easily acclimatize to the farm, I mean, to the environment. Mm -hmm. So... You know, like if you, if you probably treat them for um if you okay any infection antibiotics in January, which you know that your deworming routine should be around February, so we just lapse like a month after that is like before or five months mm -hmm. interval for a general treatment. Mm -hmm. You understand? So in which we use we have diverse kind of antibiotics and vitamin for them. So without them showing any sign. There is there is a guideline. There is a way we go about it in treating them, and which I've just explained now. 
Oh, okay. Man, thank you so much. Um, ev- uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we do have uh, Mr. Tijani Omokende um, on the show, who is an expert um, in Romanian production, ex- especially the Boa Goat as well. That's what we're talking about today. Um, your farm, can you pronounce the name of the farm again? Pretzel, P R E. Pretzel, okay, yeah. yeah so I, I did, yeah. I did, I did get that. So, um, is the operation head um, of Pretzel Farm? Um, where is your farm located? Uh, in Jebode in Ogun State. Okay, so Pretzel Farm is located in Jebode Ogun State, uh, and um, is like I said, is the operation head, and um, is Shane. Um, you know everything we need to know about um, boar goat. Um, how we need to, uh, how we'll be able to know if um, it's a um, a good bloodline. Mm-hmm. How you know how we'll be able to uh, make sure that um, they're in good health, housing, feeding, and things like that. And um, you know, if you do like um, what we're doing, do um, subscribe on the show and do share with your family and friends. And if you also have any question for Mr. Tijani, please do type it on here so that um, you'll be able to answer um, our questions and um, you know give us idea of uh, anything that we need to know. So thank you so much. Um, so my next question basically um, is, um, is it possible to, uh, because I know you say you have other remnants there, like um, the cow and things like that. I uh, do yeah. you is it um I, the boa goats are they easily bred with other animals or do you actually have to separate them totally to be in their own space or do you like um just leave them to be with other of um your breeds as well? And now what we do here is you no know, we we have a separate place for the boa goats. But by the time we want to, because we in, in, in uh, we try to control the breeding, and also we have a record of the you know this crossing record, mm. who cross who, who cross one and all those stuff. So what we do is we introduce a particular meal for a particular time. Okay. And presently, like now, we are having. I mean, since the beginning of the month, I think we've had like um, around sixteen beds. Mm. Now, so it's as a result of, I think we crossed. The last four months of the gestation is formal. We, we cross around uh, close to 40 something goats. So, as a result of that, we're able to know who cross, you know, who cross who and what we are likely to, to expect in social so months. So, we have our exotic animals separately, the buck separately mm-hmm. from our indigenous goats. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So um, there you have it, guys. Um, you have that separately. Um, yeah. I have um, 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 Oye Oye Wumi Adiri Bikwe asking a question here about um, the the spelling of your farm name, which is a P R E T Z E L Pretzel Farm. So I'm going to have that typed on here as well. So you have that, S for it. There's S after the L. Oh, there's S after the L. Yes. Okay, yes. pretzels. Okay, yeah. okay. So I'm going to retype that. So that's um P R E T Z E L S. Yes. Right. It's identified okay. YouTube to get it all over on Instagram. Okay. So um, there you go, guys. Um, you have a farm name on Instagram. Um, I mean, you have a um, um the farm. Um, on social media as well, Pretzel Farm. They are located in Ijebu. They, I believe that's Ogun State, right? Um, yes. In Nigeria. So um, do look them up. And um, Mr. Giuliani, do you want to share your contact number on here so that I can have it? Because um, usually some people would want to get in touch with you after the show and things like that. Or no maybe problem. a general number. Mm, okay. Z- zero eight zero. Okay. Seven nine. All right, seven nine eight six eight six zero double five one zero five five one. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to have that typed on here as well. So 
story. I usually have all this information done before the show, but um, you know, we we didn't we didn't get to talk earlier, so yeah, uh, yeah so it's, it's okay. All right, so guys, like I said, I'm going to have um, the information for uh, Mr. Tijani's farm, uh, which is um, Pretzel's farm um, located in Ogo State. I'm going to have that in our uh, banner here so that you'll, you'll be able to um, contact him and you should be able to, you know, share that with us. Anything we want to know. So I have it scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Um, Pretzel Farm, um, located in Ogun State, okay. uh, and the telephone number is scrolling at the bottom uh, as well. So you can contact Mr. Tijani for any information or anything you would um, want to um, talk to him about. I, I believe you you consult and um, you do things like that, uh, right? Exactly. So um, so normally most of our guests, uh, especially in the diaspora, usually. You know they want to do that. I, I will want it to get into something like this, so um, that's one of the reasons why we have the show so that uh, we have the proper professionals to go to to ask questions and things okay. like that. So, um, so more, another question um, I wanted to ask is uh, we've talked about biosecurity and things like that. Um, the housing itself, um, you, you say you have um, a raised housing for them. Do you let them come out at, at all or they like, you know, because I know goats are usually animals you don't want to keep in a secluded place. They they want to roam around. They want to, you know, exercise and things like that. So yeah. do you actually, do you let them come out um, like they have like a large space for them where they can, um, you know, play around and things like that? Yes, what we, what we do is uh, we do semi-intensive, that is semi-intensive. Okay. Whereby we, they are restricted within a place. Okay. Now, like presently we are using like, um, like uh, two acres for them. Mm -hmm. All their movement ups and down has to be on that acre. But everything we feed them, we do cuts and carry, you know, we call it cut and carry, whereby we go out to where we have them, we we'll bring those grasses, we we'll bring, we'll bring those fruit, and we we'll bring them to them. So we didn't mm -hmm. allow them to, you know, move up and up and down on all the farms. So mm -hmm. what we practice is just a kind of a semi-intensive whereby they have access to, you know, to move up and down. Go to want to, yeah, they are browsers. They are they are, yes. they are a little bit different mm -hmm. from um, sheep and cow. They want to mm -hmm. pick, but in order to be able to manage them well we limit where they can go and how far they can go. So we just permit them to roam about within the compound, but at the same time, everything they want to eat, we monitor it, we bring it oh, for them. Monitor it, okay, that, that's good. Um, so uh, the, I, I know goats are, you know, you all growing up, I always hear things, I always just leave it, they will eat anything, you know. What, uh, what kind of um, diseases are major, you know, or are they prone to that, you know, you know, this thing, if you don't take care of them very well, or you allow them just eat anything, you know, they will usually, you know, so they, because there are some diseases that are just there that they will be prone to that you need to safeguard against. So what type of disease and how do you handle things like that? Now, um, firstly, I think the major one we've had the experience and you know, a bitter one, Mm. It's a, there is a viral infection uh, they call the um, PPH. That is a pest, post ruminant stuff like that. Mm. Whereby, if that animal is like too much exposed to the air, it comes during the rainy season. If you don't manage them well, they get PPH, and you don't quickly respond to it. Um, out of 20, out of 10, you can lose six. Mm. So that is one of the things that we try as much as possible that most especially during the rainy season when we notice any animal with any, like a mocha sign. Mm. So like um, whitish um, stuff white, on it. Yeah, 
from their mouth, from their nose, we pick. We call that animals away from the rest. Mm. And the same treatment we are giving the animal wherever it is being isolated has to be given to the remaining animal because the, their immune system is different. Mm. If one animal out of five is showing a particular sign, the remaining four are not saved. It may just be because that only one did not have a good immune system. Immune that system, is why it's coming yeah. out. So yeah. if you are treating that one, you need to remember to treat the remaining four mm. for that particular either infection or that particular disease. So we try as much as possible to be to be alert, even most especially for that. Every other things could happen that you can manage. People is very, very difficult to manage. Mm. Another thing is, in terms of feeding, is bloat. When they eat too much of grains, mm. when they eat too much of grains, they build up too much gas that they won't be able to digest. Mm. So no matter what we want to give them, we'll make sure that we, we are careful with them. We give them grains. We give them a millet. But we try as much as possible to control that to control as well. Mm -hmm. And also during this rainy season, when they dip their hooves in the mud too much, they come out with a, what they call a foot rot. That is it's going to be a wound in between the hooves. Mm -hmm. So by the time it's raining, we didn't allow them to even go out. They stay inside the pen. So we have a general pen, a very big pen. So we, we didn't permit them to go much outside. So they stay inside the pen so as to prevent them from all this. Um, this okay, thank you so much, Mr. Tijani. It's, it's been wonderful talking to you. Um, I do have some comments from some of our guests, um, our viewers on, on the show. Um, from Gideon um, Akatu, um, he wants to know um, if you do have purebred, which we do. And um, how many do you have available at um, a given time, and how much it is um, that um, you know you you uh, what are the cost um, for the purebreds? Uh, presently, we, we we do not have any pure line for sale. Okay. You know we we can't really say, but very soon, very very soon, because at, at the beginning we couldn't get the breed the pure line breeding well. The breed, I mean, like. The pure line production wasn't, you know, we didn't do well at the beginning with it. Mm. But it, it took time, you know, lack of experience and some other things. So as a result of that, that slows the pure line production down massively. So presently, we do not have the pure line available for sale, but we have the hybrid, that is a boa buck cross with indigenous goat, either red Sokoto, Kalawa, uh, uh, West African dwarfs, Sahel, and Nubian. Mm. You know, those ones we have available, but we do not have a pure line available for sale. Okay, there you have it, um, Mr. Gideon. Um, and you also, if you still want more information, you can contact um, Mr. Tijani. His number is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Um, also, I have Matthew um, Nyakure here who wants to know... Uh, what are the best breeds of goat to rear in different parts of the country? Now, the exotic one, wild goat can adapt anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. Wild goat can adapt. The ex another one, Kalihari. Kalihari is also from South Africa. That too can adapt anywhere. But also our own indigenous, West Africa dwarfs, that is a wild. As far as we are concerned, based on our own result, is the best. West African dwarfs is the best. We've tried red chocoto. We have them on the farm. We've tried Sahel, but red chocoto will, will do well anywhere within this country. Mm. All right. There you have it, uh, Mr. Matthew. Um, so I am going to let us to go back to our local breeds. Um, so how are we, um, you know, promoting this because uh, the only reason why uh, the Boa Goat or the Kalhari that are from South Africa are doing pretty good is that they've been able to um, manage them and, um, you know, push them to that point, upgrade it and make it as um, wonderful. So what are we doing about our lo own local breed? Because I know here in, the, um, in, in Canada, getting um, the dwarf, goats <laughs> it's very expensive <laughs> you understand and um you know 
it's not just about being expensive. Um, they will tell you that it's the best coach they've ever take, they've ever tasted or they they want. You understand? So we don't appreciate our own local breeds, but um, if you go abroad, you see how people, you know, you know, take it as good as it can. So what are we doing as uh, farmers or goat farmers, ruminant farmers? What are we doing to help you know push this to? That point where we we can compete with the um, the likes of the Boa Gold, um, the Kalari, and things like that. Okay, thank you. Um, now I think we still have a long way to go in respect of that. Still a long way to go, but um, like in our home farm, practically, there are some visitors that you know anytime they come into the farm and they look at our, you know, the the west. I mean, the the dwarf. And they're like, how did you manage these animals? Because from our home retention here, what we think is you can't cage them. Like, you can't restrict yeah. them. Yeah. You can't, they want to move, you know, miles away. So, and just like large ruminants too, probably what they need to consume per day is, um, what they need to consume per day is five kg. Mm. You understand? And you allow them to roam about, go ups and down. Probably, why doing that? They must have gone at like two kg, yes, and utilize the remaining three kg. Mm. But when you do a semi intensive or a full intensive under a good management, they maximize everything they take in. Yes. yes, they convert everything they take in. So by that, the hard up, the hard up will be different from what other people that probably do a free range, you know, um, farming. For them, so in in a little way, we we try to do that. And when you get when you see some what, why they are not pregnant? You think they are pregnant <laughs> because they, they they look bulky and they look big. And you like, is this a is this a? You no, know, at times some people, when you have like when you, a, like white or a dark brown that look like a calari crosses. Yeah. So they're like, is this is this a calari cross or a boa mm -hmm. cross? No, I think the pure what. This is a pure what. So I think it's as a result of that, but we still need a lot of people to to come up doing this kind of thing so as to be able to West African dove is to me is one of the best best breeds so far from my own personal experience on the farm. So we still need a lot to do in respect of that. But in a simple way, we just try to restrict them, make sure that they maximize everything we give them, they eat, we look at their health, and they are doing massive, massively well. Oh, so thank you so much. Um, just to add to what you said, um, one of the reasons why our local cattle breeds are not doing very well is the same reason that you know mm -hmm. they you know because we graze them mostly in Nigeria mm -hmm. and um, over here you see um, cattle or you see cows and you're like oh my god why is cow this cow so you know they're looking so beautiful even before you know you know you're gonna eat them but man they are so well kept you know, environment, everything, because they are kept um, in an intensive, um, you know, system sure. or, you know, semi-intensive, okay. like you said. So, you know, uh, we, we we just need to change our orientation back home on how we do things, you know. You know, the whole uh, ways... Another, another thing, too, is about this um, inbreeding. There's something they call inbreeding. Yes, yes. That, that's uh, so I think that is affecting a lot, too. Mm, 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 that is affecting mm. a lot, too. Wow, so so nice talking to you, um, uh, Mr. Tijani. I'm so grateful you've been able to come on the show, and um, I'm hoping that you know we'll be able to call on you again because we still have a lot to talk about. So, you know, since you are into ruminants, we you know we have yes. cattle and everything, so we are going to be touching base with you once again so that we'll bring you back okay. on the show, you know, once okay. again. So, um, what are your last words? for uh, want to be um, ruminant farmers, boar goat farmers, or farmers generally? Now, this is my last word. Um, farming is interesting, but you have to have the passion because you doing it well without passion um, is not going to be... Passion is very, very crucial because at times in the process of it, you, you learn and some are so costly, some are so expensive. Mm. And 
if you can have the passion and ready to go into it, Life Talk, Ruminat specifically, is one of the most best aspect of this uh, Life Talk family that is, that is good. So my advice for everybody is, um, yes, goat and cow, they're all interesting. They're all interesting. And as much as you are ready psychologically and you're ready financially, all right, thank you so much. Um, I just want to touch with one of our viewers. Um, um, oh yeah, we we've we actually answered your question. You wanted to know what um is a is how to spell um the, the name of the farm, which we've done. It's right on the screen. Um, just see, um, it's scrolling at the bottom of the screen. So that's um answer to your question there. You can get the spelling there. So uh thank you so much, Mr. Gianni, for joining us on the show once again. Uh, we you. do hope we'll be able to call back on you. And Anyone? viewers, uh, if you want to get in touch with him, uh, we have um the details scrolling at the bottom of um the screen. It's um Pretzels Farm located in Ogun State, um, Nigeria, and the phone number is um zero eight zero seven nine eight six zero five five one uh for those abroad remember your plus two three four and um you know you should be able to get in touch i believe um this number should be on whatsapp and um things like that right exactly on whatsapp yeah so you can also reach him on whatsapp with that number and um you can ask questions because definitely i'm going to be talking to him after the show as well because um he's you you know he knows um what he's talking about and he's been through it um all so thank you so much once again for coming on the show we are very grateful to have you and um you know may god keep blessing you more and more and um, your farm will keep growing and um, success will always be yours. Um, we are all farmers and we, we, we are glad that you've been able to share with other farmers as well your knowledge and um, why, you know, it's, that's how it's meant to be. We, a good farmer should always um, be ready to help other farmers to grow as well. You understand? So thank you once again. Um, view, viewers, yeah, thank you. For viewers, um, I'm glad I'm so happy for you guys joining us. Um, to Oye Umi, I did replay Machu Yanikura, um, Gordian Akatsu, and uh, Margaret Ukulukwe, that's my mom, um, Egutu Gloria, Bolati Tosalami. So, thank you so much, guys, for being part of the show today. Until we meet you, um, come back home um, next year. Uh, next uh, next week um thank you so much and remember do let's try to farm um as little as we can um planting in small spaces is very important because um it's going to help us um feed our family and um the nation as well and um also um no remember no farmer no food so thank you so much and do have a wonderful day till we meet again